Welcome to the Nostalgia Film Society. I love movies, TV shows, good movies, bad movies, everything in between. But there's always those certain movies or TV shows that have that more, you know, sentimental and nostalgic feeling to them. So today I'm watching Are You Afraid of the Dark? Season 1, Episode 4. I definitely remember hearing about the show when I was growing up, but I never watched it. Horror is typically a genre I avoided. I in no way went near this when I was younger. It would have terrified me. I'm also watching watching Goosebumps. You can check out those reaction videos as well. I'm really enjoying the anthology style of the show and, you know, everybody around this campfire telling stories and trying to one-up each other and trying to prove how tough they are and, you know, scare each other and prove, you know, who can tell the scariest story. And it's interesting to have, you know, scary stories told by kids that are about kids also. And the kids around the campfire we don't really know much about. So I'm very curious to see as the season progresses and the series goes on how much we learn about them and what those characters are like because obviously the main focus of the episode is what the story is about. I hope there's no clowns in this one. There was clowns in the previous episode. I hate clowns, spiders, nothing like that. Please, I don't want anything to do with that. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Not again. Sunday scaries? Oh, cue the fog. What's showing up at your door now? <laughs> Poor kid of sleep paralysis. Oh my god, that was a nightmare. It was like the Grin Reaper showing up. Cheese and rice. Oh my god, nope, hate that. Yeah. Oh my god. The story. The tale of the twisted claw. Da -da -da -da. I love the way they do it with you know th the like the symbolism of throwing it onto the fire. <gasps> a Halloween episode. The night they call mischief. Night. Ooh. Afraid the witch is gonna get you? No such thing. Then let's do it. I'm very excited about a Halloween episode. And of course, these guys are mildly bullying each other again. Oh, shaving cream in the face. Um, oh, I hope that wasn't a family heirloom. You broke her vase, kids. Now you gotta run. Come on. This poor lady in her very Victorian home. <laughs> well, that's very unsettling. She into revenge now? She's like, finally I have an excuse to get these kids. <laughs> Quite the flair for the dramatics. <laughs> and don't go too far. I hear some of the candy's poison this year. <laughs> Is this kid grapes with the balloons? <laughs> it's so cute. Wildly impractical, but adorable. Oh no, now they're thinking about the poison candy. Yes. Trigger tree. <laughs> so enthusiastic. I didn't think anyone was coming. Come in. Come in. Like, the vase is still broken on the floor. Like, oh my god, these boys are not making out alive. Two very special boys. Uh, a claw? Is that a human hand? Sure. Three for both of us. Come in. Oh, I'm sure it means three wishes apiece. You wish for more wishes, everybody knows. A nonsense. You must take it. I won't take no for an answer. She's like, why boring old candy when you can have a claw that grants wishes? I mean, who hasn't heard of that? These family portraits on the wall are creeping me out also. It looks like a chicken foot. Be careful what you wish for. Ha 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 ha! Whoa! What's the matter? It moved. Be careful what you wish for. Can I get some more candy? Ugh. 
He's already used one of his wishes. He's got to be careful. Yeah. Maybe she was sizing up our brains for her magic suit. Yeah, right. I also thought she was going to eat the small children. What's going on here with these hooligans? Oh my gosh. You get some candy, boys? Candy's bad for you. Oh my god, why do they have these masks? Cheese and rice. Bunch of bullies. <laughs> Maybe you should give it to us. Get your own candy, you losers. Yeah? Well, it's gonna give me something I've wanted since I was a kid. You are a kid! Oh my god. I wish... I wish it could beat Bossic in the 600. Whoa! Whoa! It like turned green and everything. Oh god. Runners, take your mark! 600 finals! Come on, you guys, let's go! Let's go! Move! 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 Bostic looks like Josh from the previous episode. He is. Yeah, we'll see. Come on, Kevin! <laughs> Get set! Up! Sports! Sports! Come on, Kevin! Oh, here comes Kevin! Go, 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 go! I'm sorry, what is uh, whispering in the tree over there? What's going on? <laughs> Sounds like a dog growling. What? Oh, yep. Oh. Bostick's gonna get chased by a dog. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, the dog just trips him. I thought the dog was gonna like attack him. Just trips him. That's all it takes. Yalloop! And to the finish line for Kevin. Well, the wishes work. Nobody's turned into flies yet, but cue the dog. He's like, I'm the best! Make the wishes come true. Cool. Hey, I'd wish for a million bucks and take my chances. Same kid, Sam. Where'd they come from? Oh, jeez. Grants are here. He know what to do. Dougie, enough! What if my parents find What is that guy playing with? And forget it. No one is telling nobody nothing. But my folks. But my folks. But my folks. I wish you'd just lose your folks. Oh, no. Oh, you said I wish. Oh, this episode's gonna get and dark. It. Yep. No, no, it, it just... You made a wish. Yeah. So There's my folks. Yeah, but... Oh no, that phone call is gonna be something horrible. They're in the hospital. It was the wish! No way! It was! You wished it! Now they're having a wish off. The wish for them to be okay! Yeah! No! Every time we make a wish, something bad happens. Yep, be careful what you wish for. I wish Grant's here. He knows what to do. Ah! <laughs> With this green glow. Your grandfather's dead. You don't think. They could bring people back from the dead with this thing? Cheese and rice, how powerful is this claw? The claw! Cue grandpa. With his car just rolling up in the fog and yet yeah, nobody inside. Ooh. And this like old classic car. Dougie, he's dead. He may be a skeleton or rotten. This grandpa POV as they fight over the wish. They're running out of wishes fast, so they gotta make him count. I got one wish left and I ain't meeting no ghost! <laughs> We're sorry we broke Miss Chloe's vase, and we wish it never ever happened. Whoa! Turned orange this time. Okay. Setting everything back. That was his last wish, so. Yeah, now he's real tough, hiding under the table. Come on. The car. He's like, remember the time I almost brought back my dead grandpa? With a magical claw. Oh, they're like, here, you get the vase now. With a note. That's why you always leave a note. What does it say? Trick or treat. 
Ha <laughs> ha! They got tricked for sure. Oh my gosh. Cackle of Sly. Witch. <laughs> With the creepy like gate closing as it creaks. So that was my first time watching Are You Afraid of the Dark Season 1 Episode 4. It definitely reminded me of the Goosebumps episode, which is called Be Careful What You Wish For. Obviously, we saw the wishes in this episode as well. And I love that it was a Halloween episode, especially this time of year. We're getting very close to Halloween. So that just added an extra element for me. And... You know, these boys, these best friends trying to uh, grapple with this responsibility of wishes and trying to realize, okay, like every time we wish something for ourselves, something evil happens. And, you know, do they continue to wish and then kind of trying to backtrack and undo the wishes that they inadvertently created. And this claw thing definitely seemed like a painted chicken foot, but I don't care. I'm not here to, you know, dive into that. But the fact that this you know, witch or this person in the neighborhood who obviously had rumors of being perceived as a witch is now playing this trick on them for Halloween. And, you know, as they are the only ones who come trick or treating. And at first I was like, okay, is it going to be real? Is she just setting it up so that they think things are going to happen? And then, you know, it's just coincidence. Like, was the dog really there? Or was it, you know, just happened to be there at that random moment? Like, is it actually the wish? But obviously we saw that it was very much, you know, coming from this claw and that they each got three wishes I thought was interesting because usually it's a set amount and the fact that there was, you know, what if there had been three of them where they've got nine wishes, you know? So that was interesting and I'm always surprised no one wishes for more wishes. It seems like such an obvious thing and then even one of the characters at the campfire being like, I'd wish for a million dollars and see what happened. I'd be like, same. That's, I'd probably do something very similar but to see them again, you know, similar to Goosebumps, wanting to excel at sports whereas we had basketball. This guy wants to be, you know, the top runner on the track and field team Bostick and you know out of nowhere comes this dog and trips him and he breaks his leg I was like that's so gruesome and not only is he not winning the race he's not playing you know he's not competing in races you know anytime soon and the fact that the tree you know it was kind of like rustling the grass around it and this wind I was like okay is something gonna happen like is something gonna you know a ghost or something come out of the grass like how are we gonna stop this guy from winning but this black dog comes out of nowhere and honestly I thought the dog was gonna like attack him because that would prevent him from winning the race but it just walks in front of him and he trips okay that works um not a ton of like special effects other than that the foot was glowing basically and I'd like that they use a lot of like mystery and it probably was for also the budget but like the fog and just this very you know slow shot of the car pulling up and then the pov of the guy you know walking to the door we don't see the character that you know it's you can't see anybody in the car and it's this older you know black car that pulls up and just adding that mystery element as opposed to trying to create a ghost grandpa to be there and you know knock at the door or anything like that and you know this poor kid thought he loses his parents and then trying to figure out how to fix this and luckily he's the sensible one and realizes that they have to put this all back and realizing that this nothing good is coming from this like yes they're getting what they want but it's at a pretty big cost and you know they're hurting people along the way and that's not what they want to do and and we had those bullies that you know took their candy but the guy wanted to go home and again it's not specific in how he got there it's just he wanted to be done with trick-or-treating so these bullies showed up and made his night over basically he didn't say we should just walk home you know it's there's leaving room for interpretation and similar to the goosebumps episode episode where she's like you need to be very you know specific and have lots of details in these wishes and to see the two of them you know fighting over it and whose wish is it now and what are they gonna do like outwish each other and who ends up with the last wish and you know to see it turn this orangey red color at the end when it disappears and he finally you know resets everything and she brings in the vase I don't know what they're gonna do with the vase at the end like it's, it seems like a very expensive you know antique item I don't know what these two boys are gonna do with it or explain to their parents and anytime I saw it in the house I would just be reminded of the night I almost you know unalived people I care about because of a wish accidentally and they just kept holding in their hand and say I wish and you're like this is not the time I know it's just a phrase and I know you're just you know speaking and venting out your feelings but stop saying those words I wish 
I like that we had the setting of Halloween and this, you know, very old, like, Victorian house set. You know, there's these old family portraits. We just saw kind of, like, the entranceway to this house. And even when the lady gets freaking shaving cream in her face, she just takes off her glasses and starts laughing. And I was like, okay, that was creepy because I was like, are you now excited because you have an excuse to seek revenge basically because these boys you know did this to you i don't think they meant to do it to you they meant to do it to the house but either way this is what happened and she wasn't you know yelling after them she was just like i'll get them like she knew she was gonna get her karma and get her revenge and get back at them and she definitely did and it's interesting to see what they wished for once they had the power of wishes and kind of what their priorities were and this kid just wanted to see his grandpa again which I thought was very sweet but also terrifying that it has the power to bring people back from the dead like that's a line we're crossing and you know what bad thing is gonna happen if grandpa shows up at the door like is he back for good like is it just tonight like just yeah they're going they're playing fast and loose with these wishes man and it was interesting how we started the episode with the half of a story or the end of the story you know this cliffhanger as this kid is telling a story and he's like well that's it like I don't know how else to end it right now like it's interesting to see kind of their work in progress and how they wouldn't have a full formulated story and much like if you were writing a story maybe you'd step away for a little bit do a couple chapters you know here and there but whatever that story was going with the grim reaper showing up with that kid sleeping nightmare I don't know if they'll pick up that story if they just had kind of a scene in mind and wanted to frame it that way but we haven't had an episode start like that before so that was interesting to kind of see the progress and they're like why would you call a meeting if you don't have a story and yeah we like I said we don't know much about the kids you know by the campfire but I hope we learn more as the show goes on We know David's the one that got Kristen the birthday present and, you know, he says he hasn't told the story in a while and he's been thinking of something and he finally shares. And yeah, it's interesting. I definitely feel like more kids, I mean, we're only in episode four, but I feel like there's certain kids that are more involved and some of them are just kind of there to you know, enjoy the social aspect of it. But some of them, I feel like also kind of torment the other ones a little bit and egg them on and just say like, oh, come on, like, that's not scary or get these big grins on their faces when they finally hear a really, really scary story. And they're kind of enjoying the, you know, the thrill of being scared by the story. Definitely had bullying again, (laughs) definitely had, you know, some themes of that. But at least these friends seem to be a little bit nicer to each other. The few episodes are hard to watch when one character is just being unrelentlessly, like, brutal to the other character. And this one, they seem to at least be, you know, best friends and we're kind of listening to each other and kind of being kind. And, you know, I understand there's going to be conflict in the show. That's how it works. But still, I was like, dang, some of these are just real jerks. And, you know, them fighting over the wishes... Overall, I thought it was a good episode. I liked the Halloween aspect. This Miss Clove, you know, there's someone in the neighborhood that, you know, everybody suspects is a witch and they go trick or treating. We see their costumes. It definitely was perfect for this time of year, you know, getting closer to Halloween. And the wishes concept was the first episode I've seen like that for Are You Afraid of the Dark? I have seen a Goosebumps episode with wishes. So, That's the first deviation we've kind of had from ghosts and it was a witch. So I'm curious to see more, you know, supernatural elements, if they'll do, you know, vampires, werewolves, anything like that. It's strictly been kind of ghost stories up until this episode. And just, again, I like when they keep it relatable of these friends, you know, going out on Halloween and pulling pranks, which I don't encourage, but, you know, I feel like that's something kids would do and, you know, them getting trapped by these bullies and, you know, trying to decide, okay, what should we wish for and kind of what's important to them and and intentionally having to reset everything because obviously nothing good can come from these wishes and... I think a lot of people wish things would be different, but we don't have the power to actually make that come true. So it's interesting to see when that happens. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Is this poor kid of sleep paralysis? Oh my god, that was a nightmare. It was like the Grin Reaper showing up. Oh, shaving cream in the face. Is this kid grapes with the balloons? It looks like a chicken foot. I'm sorry, what is uh, whispering in the tree over there? Now they're having a wish off <laughs> with this green glow. They could bring people back from the dead with this thing?